Good evening and welcome to episode 54 of COVID Cast JA. I'm your host, Rochelle Cameron, and COVID Cast is brought to you every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. by the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, the PSOJ, and our sponsors, NCB Group and JMM, JMMB Group. So tonight we continue our discussions on the cultural and creative industry. And in fact, tonight we're going to take you on the track and field. We're keeping things on the track and field. Tonight we're going to be talking about football. We're also going to be talking about another sport, sport rugby. And we'll have an athlete on talking about experience during COVID and preparations for the Olympics coming up. Sports is very, very important to us in Jamaica. You know that. Up to sports day, you go to a preschool sports day, and you would think that you are at the Olympics. How many of us were glued for the last several days on the Boys and Girls Championship? So tonight we're going to be talking about the intricacies of the sport, the experiences through COVID and the recovery of sports post COVID. Also, staging sporting events during a pandemic without um, actual spectators. What is, what is going on? So if you did not get this week's memo, remember every week we have a written memo that is posted on smallbusinessportal.com, but we encourage you also to sign up for the memo by emailing us at sme at psoj.org so that you can get our weekly memo. And this week's memo, we get into the business of sports. So ladies and gentlemen, our first guest is a gentleman who is known to most. He is Christopher Williams, co-founder and CEO of Proven and chairman of Professional Football Jamaica Limited. He sits on many boards and he continues to set a very high bar in the finance industry through his pioneering achievements. Proven is an established force to be reckoned with across the business landscape, locally, regionally, and internationally. And in 2017, Chris received a nomination for the renowned Business Leader Award, a recognition reserved for the top CEOs in Jamaica. So many of you are wondering, how has he segued into being chairman of Professional Football Jamaica Limited? Of course, we cannot start the evening without recognizing that not only is he a graduate of the great University of the West Indies and the prestigious Schulich School of Business at York, University in Toronto, Canada, but most importantly, most importantly, he is <laughs> a Jamaica college <laughs> old boy, or we can call him young boy. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You and the rest Perfect. of the college community on this, this, I mean, historic win 10 years later and um, winning in style. Yeah. No, the truth is, Rochelle, I must tell you that I'm really happy to be on because um, I know you know a lot of people <laughs> and um, I'm looking for a contractor, right? I, I, need, I need some, I need a contractor, ASAP. And I, 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 want, a, I want a good contractor. Okay. Right? Because we need to build a new trophy, a new trophy room. <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry. We need to build a new trophy room up at up at, up at the school. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the trophy room pack up. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Chuck a block. Right now, right now it have the Manning Cup and the, the Champs trophy. So you need yeah. You need it, it, it's not a thirty thousand dollar contractor we're looking at. No, no, no. We need a top, 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 top. Yeah, A grade, A grade contractor. You understand? Know I mean? Because it's a big job. This. You understand? Know yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We, we we need a contractor. So I'm glad. I was really happy when you invited me on because I know you know a whole lot of people. So when we, <laughs> when we finish 
we don't finish here. Send me a WhatsApp. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and people are going to be posting in the comments. Oh, yeah, get, exactly. Uh, so, better, please. Yeah. They're gonna, everybody watching, you know, listening, we are begging to just send a, send a message in the chat. You know, give me a link. So, boy, how quick we urgently need it right now. Right now, the principal is on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Chris, since we're on this whole topic of, of JC and champs, um, from your perspective, can you give us your views on the staging of champs this year, which was nothing we would have ever imagined two, three years ago was possible? Can you give us your views on the staging of champs for this year? Uh, I, I, bittersweet. Bittersweet. Um, bitter because... You know, boy, you're not there, you know? And, you know, I mean, I, 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 I spent some time watching it with my family and uh, I spent some time uh, with, the, with the boys up at, up at the school watching it. And in both cases, mm -hmm. while the, the, the people are watching it, they are cheering. So the, 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 the cheering and the watching of the race is something they cannot release. So yeah. you know, um, you, you know, we sit down with my son, um, um, JP, and him is like Jesse, Jesse. Every you know, beat of the desk, and you know, yeah. race. So you know, it was a bit bitter because um, you didn't, you didn't have that in the, the intensity of the moment. But it was sweet in the fact that we were able to actually host it. And yeah. the, the, the feeling that you got, you know, just being away from this pandemic and the, the bad news and the, you know, and the sickness and, the, and all of the, the, the drama and just being able to escape into the joy of these kids um, was just sweet. It, 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 just, it just brought me down. You know, down, you know, to a nice zen feeling. And of course, you know, the fact that we were winning wasn't, wasn't bad, but it hurts. <laughs> it, it, it made it even better. But it was just a nice zen just yeah. to watch the kids and they were celebrating, you know. So it, it wasn't like they were, they, they, they obviously blocked out the fact that there was no crowd and they were so focused on competing. You know, and that was a sweet. That was a sweet. I mean, sports means sports means as much to Jamaica as as you know being Jamaican. You know, just just that stamp um, that 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 we have in our passport that that, that just says you know um, we're Jamaican. Mm -hmm. We we just, as you said, I mean, we 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 we're just born into competition. Whether, whether it's preschool, basic school, prep school, primary school, with us always in a, some kind of, you know, competitive um, environment, whether it's, you know, the football, you know, host competition or the track um, sports day host competition or the, you know, the, the bunny eating contest. Or, so so we, we, we have this, this um, desire to be in a competitive um um, 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 program, and uh, and and it just it just builds us into into um, a beast, you know, and yeah. and that beast is just defined as as a Jamaican. So I'm really happy that you um, use the opportunity to focus on sports as well in the in the focus on the creative, because it is clear to me that. Um, sports is a critical part of our economic future. Yeah. It's that, 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 forget about our cultural future, sure, but our economic future, sports is a critical player, critical. Yeah. And we, we have to talk about that. But before we even go there, um, Professional Football Jamaica Limited, can you tell us a little bit about this organization? Right. So, so this is this is the the step that that um, that I think uh, is critical 
to us commercializing sport. Okay. Um, and, and that step is filling the gap between the administrator and the business person. Mm -hmm. And what we have, what we know is that sports has attracted a lot of great administrators. And the administrators, you know, either they're themselves or their kids play the sport and they grow up into it and they love it and they want to give back and they take it on as a as a hobby, essentially. And they become a, an administrator. Um, what the JFF recognized <clears throat> is that there needed to be uh, a bridging of the gap between the business uh, mindset and community and that administrator mindset and community. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, they established a working group. Um, that working group was chaired by Christopher Samuda. And, uh, and that working group came up with a, with a solution uh, mm -hmm. for the JFF. And that solution was to create an entity called Professional Football Jamaica Limited. And that entity would be, be, be given the mandate to bridge that gap. Okay. And the bridging of that gap is essentially the commercialization of the, of the Premier League, which is the, <clears throat> which is the, which is, you know, obviously by the, by the name, the premier um, football competition in the country. Yeah. So, so that, that um, uh, entity, um, objective is to drive revenue into mm -hmm. the sport. That is our sole focus. And mm -hmm. what the, 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 the recommendation from Chris Samudo uh, was is that he uh, or, sh or the, the entity should be chaired by an independent uh, uh, individual from the business community. And uh, and and they asked me to 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 be the, the the chairman, and so that's 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 how you know I I got involved, and that's the role of the entity. The role of the entity is commercialization, driving the revenue of the Premier League, and and we can talk about why that is important. You know, you know it's, it's actually. We are so keyed into the English Premier League because everybody have them jersey and things. But yet, um, as as a an entire nation on the community level, yes, um, we have the followers of of the teams, but we have never really seen where the commercialization, that driving revenue, has been integral. We still kind of just treat it as some baller out there playing and hopefully they'll be picked up by an international team and maybe they may make it to the reggae boys. Right. What's the, what, what, what is be behind all of this? What is the why? And um, is it that we should have really been doing this from a long time ago, but no time like the present? We should have been doing it from a long time ago, but no time like the present. Uh, you know, that the, 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 the Opportunity we got in 1998. I mean, I know, I know you were like two or three at that time, but you know, um, I was, I, I, <laughs> I, I was, you know, privileged to be in the stadium, and um, and uh, the opportunity we got there put us on the world stage and put us, um, you know, decades ahead of of in frankly the rest of the Caribbean. Um, mm -hmm. However, we weren't able to capitalize on it. Um, you know, we needed something like this then. But as you said, no time like the present. So, so what? What the the, the the benefit of this is, is that it gives an economic opportunity to the participants in the sport. Now, that is important if you want long term dedication and focus. If you if there is no economic benefit and it and it is therefore defined as a hobby or, mm -hmm. or you know or something you do on the side you're not going to be able to get the kind of dedication and focus from the various participants 
whether that participant is a coach or is a manager or is a masseuse or is a, um, um, a, a physical trainer uh, or is a player, you know, the, 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 or is a referee, yeah. unless we establish an economic base for the sport, we're not going to be able to, to drive um, the, the, the kind of development that we want for the sport. So that would, that's, the, that's the core of it. Um, mm -hmm. No, that core um, leads you to ask the question, so how do you drive the revenue and, and, and make this thing a lot more attractive? Um, and the pandemic, Rochelle, was a godsend for us in answering mm -hmm. that question. Um, you yourself have understood the, 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 what I'm about to say because of your program here. Your program here has highlighted the fact that we are able to reach our mm. audience in, a, in an efficient and effective way um, outside of you know, um, traditional media. Yeah. Outside, you know, you don't have to get onto primetime news. You mm -hmm. know, this is 7.30 on a Thursday. Everybody else, you know, 20 years ago, everybody else would say to you, boy, you're salt. Because, <laughs> you know, it's news time. And we're, so we're doing news and there's no other way you can get your, yourself, um, you can communicate with an audience. Yes. But we, we, we through, through the evolution of technology, we now have the opportunity to reach people uh, through several channels. Mm -hmm. And the pandemic has highlighted that. So your program has highlighted that and um, we identified that. So yes. We have now recognized, since we can't get nobody into the stadium because the pandemic forces us to keep the stadium closed and no spectators, we're like, damn, how, how are we going to, 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 to make money? And then we said, yo, but let us you know, broadcast the game, whether we broadcast it, stream it, or we broadcast it on TVM or TVJ, um, or broadcast it on Sportsmax, or hell, let's just broadcast it on all and, 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 and really multiply the, 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 the distribution of the event. Yeah. And, and so suddenly, the, the, the negative of not having any spectator turned into Philip into a huge positive because you are now able to um, demonstrate to the sponsors that you can now reach way more people, way more people. And you can reach them, you can reach them in a, in a, in a, in a better presentation because it, the, the reality is um, broadcast is better than live. You know, I, I went to the Super Bowl um, not obviously not, not this year, last year, 2019. And I, you know, watched the Super Bowl from the stadium, everything, excitement, you know, come back to Jamaica and and sitting down with my wife, I'm gonna say, yo, the Super Bowl bad. <laughs> the wickedest thing. So we sit down there now and she said, you know, the the, the, the people them said, Boy, yo, daddy, you watch the um, you watch J Lo. I must say J Lo. I said, yeah, you know what's J Lo? I said, it was J Lo. Yo, I could not even see the person on the stage the way how Mafar from the show. You understand me? I'm and the stage was all turned. My, my back, her back was to me. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so even worse. When I actually watched what they watched. When I actually now watch the replay of the Super Bowl, you know, I'm going to go up on YouTube and, and press play and watch the game, the same game where me watch and say, yo, when me watch it on TV, I, I was like, what the hell? This is, a, this, I mean, the game was unbelievable on television. You could see the players' um, reactions. You can't see them thing there in the stadium. You can't see. You can't see so close. Like them, them see J Lo twist and turn, and J Lo talk to them in the camera and all them thing. There. 
And we just we just see them thing you know, So so television has surpassed live. Television yeah. has surpassed live. Um, broadcast. Let me not say television. Broadcast. And broadcast. then what it also does is that the opportunities even for sponsorship, because one of the things is that we we you know we were always focused on the event and the venue of the event, but now the the sponsorship opportunities that that marketplace multiply. That and then you can you can focus the eyes of the people when you're in the stadium. You you know the the, 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 the this one sign is on you know is on the left side of the field while the the, the, the people are seated on the right side of the field. So them cast the sign and so on. But when they're watching it on television, when they put up a crawl across the screen, everybody ever see it. You know. Yeah. So 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 we through this pandemic, we you know we s sat down with Sports Max. And they basically schooled us on 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 the fact that listen, this pandemic was was the best thing that could, could have happened to 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 PFGL and to the to the Premier League, and so we were able to establish a broadcast contract with Sportsmax, and they will produce the the the, the events. I mean, Rochelle, the, the 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 signage when they showed us some of the La Liga games and so on, and you are seeing this sign covering the seating and the thing. No sign that there, you know. No sign that there is the is the graphics from the um is the graphics from the broadcast booth is overlaying on the the empty seats to give it the appearance that there's a sign, you know. So 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 they're able to you know manipulate the the, the, the camera work mm -hmm. and and put superimpose you know graphics and so on. So to to give sponsors even more benefits, you know. So, so it 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 it's, it demonstrates that we are now into a realm that um in you know we we were oblivious to, and I hope um, champs also um you know has learned that from this experience and run with it. So it's mm -hmm. so it's not just the live experience, but it's the live now combined with the broadcast. And 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 so on, and and just take the revenue, you know, to another level. The level, because I so, think Chris, as you spoke on the business of sports, you went through just the, the different types of roles, just even for a game, the referee, the coaches, the managers. But a lot of times we don't talk about in this business of sports that it is bigger than what is happening at the game. The game is just a culmination of a lot of negotiations, yeah. of contracts. The lawyer, the lawyer, the the, 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 the broadcasters at Sportsmax, the, the commentators. Um, it, it, it feeds a lot of people. Uh, so, so I feel strongly that, that we have the opportunity to develop a, a much more robust creative industry uh, coming out coming off of this pandemic because the pandemic has allowed us to um, lower the distribution barrier. The, the, the distribution barrier before this limited us from getting, you know, sun splash, which, you know, can put on a show and just broadcast it or, 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 um, or some fest and just broadcast it on their YouTube channel. And that allows them to get past you know the, the the major networks that would probably have blocked them out and so on and and, and not be able to 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 get their distribution up. Um, but you saw you saw Beris's show, which had a million um, yeah. views. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and 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 so we now need to grab a hold of this broadcast um, opportunity, um, marry it, uh, well, slice it into mm -hmm. spot ship bites and then marry it with the sponsors so so it's not just i mean you you have sold covid cast to ncb and um jmmb in block but you could obviously have had as you know a segment of you know um rochelle's thoughts um brought to you by proven and then you have another segment of you know chris williams um, you know, um, money, money, money matters brought to you by NCB and, and, you know, Jerry Benswick, um, you know, um, you know, um, jokes 
brought to you by JMB. So, so you, you, you can get a lot more creative and cut it up into bite sizes and, and sell it. Um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's what we did. That's what we did with, with, um, with Premier League. So we, 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 we cut it up. You know, we have, uh, we have we have an insurance provider. So if you see a player go down injured on the field, you're gonna say, "Don't worry." The, the commentators will say, "Don't worry, that player is covered by X Y Z. He has insurance." So you know, we're just we're just doing working with Sportsmax, um, just finding cute little ways to give the sponsors benefits um, um, during the during the coverage of the game. Uh, yeah. Of course, you you have the crawls, you have the logo on the screen. I see you have that here for for NCB and JMB. Um, so you know you have you have you know those as well. So um, the, 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 the sports no the sport now becomes an entertainment product, mm -hmm. and that entertainment product is sold. Um, you know, not now, obviously, because you can't sell it live, but it, it but can be sold live and can be sold um, broadcast. Yes. Um, and then you chop it up and you sell it. Now, the reason um, it is so important that we develop this industry is because, Rochelle, people all over the world prefer live act activity, whether it's reality TV or is sport or is a concert, they prefer to watch a live activity happening now. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it's a live interview or a live football game or a live rugby game or, or champs. It, 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 it gives you an additional advantage one advantage is the eyeballs. Mm -hmm. More importantly, is the heartstring. So me now, me love Grace Kennedy because Grace Kennedy sponsored champs and allowed Jamaica College to win. And as a result, me married the two. So it's Don Webby give the JC man the, the so all of the all of the water and the Going around, have done with being at the picture. <laughs> so, so all of our, all of our celebrating, done with being in the middle of all of the celebrating because him in the picture, I give um, um, the trophy to our captain. You know, um, so it when you when you sponsor sport, you don't just get the benefit of the eyeballs, you get the heart yeah. as well. Yeah. because you know you you're watching Jahil hide. And you know you you, you you love Jahil, so the fact that our, our NCB ad comes on right away after Jahil runs, you know, just gives that additional um, excitement. Excitement. That is so true because yeah. because sports really is about tapping into the mind. Because and then, you know everybody's a coach and everybody could have run faster or <laughs> better. And if they get the ball there, they would have score because they don't understand the man there. <laughs> you know, good. You know, how are you, you familiar with that? How are you familiar with that? Yeah, exactly. And Everybody's a coach. So it 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 unlocks the heart. Yeah. And, then, and that's what you want as a when you're a sponsor, you know. You don't just want you don't just want the fact that the man watching the ad. You want to find a way to tie his affection to your product. And and so that you know whether it's the reggae boys or as I said Jahil or Usain or Waterhouse or on it, you know as you can see with, with you know we have a we have um, the USA and England have been able to they master that with, mm -hmm. with 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 Man U and Liverpool and you know and you see you know everybody swear by them you know I I mean the amount of birthday parties I've gone to and the cake is a Chelsea. Um, the, 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 the cake is cut out into Chelsea logo. And I'm like, this is, I mean, this gone crazy. This is, you know, this is how passionate people are about their club. And, 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 and so we're, we're, we have a great opportunity because we're a sports nation. We just now um, need to bring the, the, the broadcast element to the people 
and 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 just and just brainwash the people, just brainwash these news. So um, Rajesh actually asked about champs, and he says you actually answered his question. And Ras Gigi, I hope I saying your name right, Ras Gigi. What are some of the challenges? Why why haven't we been able to to see this opportunity of really commercializing sports? What and then what are some of the challenges you are finding now in in changing this mindset into an economic mindset? Right. Um, as I said, the first one that I found was just the fact that there was this gap between the administrators who were talking football and the business people who were talking um, loyalty and affinity and marketing and, and sales and all of that jargon. And so they were talking two different languages. So, you know, so I came in and was, you know, was able to, you know, to translate mm -hmm. between the two and, 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 and bring the, the, the business people um, in and bring the administrators in as well. Um, the second thing is, uh, as I said, I thought I think I think the pandemic helped because what the pandemic did was allowed us to focus more on the broadcast. And when we started to focus on the broadcast, um, the numbers just exploded because instead of talking about offering a sponsor five thousand people and putting up a feather banner. You know, so the so the so the benefit that a sponsor will get is you can put up a feather banner or you know a perimeter sign inside the stadium and and then and they'll they'll say how many people you expect in the stadium. And I say about about five thousand. You know, them said sure, that's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. um, or they'll give you you know ten thousand dollars for that. Um, when you know talking about it broadcast and you're talking about a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand people. Um, watching on the various um, platforms, whether it be you know IG, Facebook Live, um, YouTube, um, uh, you know um, free-to-air television, um, uh, uh, cable, etc. So you, you, it, it just exploded the the the, the, the numbers. Um, the Monday night football exercise, which was done, also helped because that started the whole process. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Premier League was, you know, previously executed on a Monday night. Um, and so that we had, so we had a base because the Monday night was so successful. Yes. So we, we were, we said, wow, let's, instead of just one night being, one game being carried live, let's try and find a way to carry all the games live. So um, instead of just one game, you know, you know, have, you know, a hundred games being carried live. And um, and then also you know add various streams because Monday night was only on cable, so you know we were able to add you know um, free to air and so on. So I think I think um, it was the combination of the pandemic as well as the the, the strategic decision by JFF to bring in um, you know business minded individuals. Um, how you yeah. put it because what you've actually done is is shown exactly how these challenges have worked for the benefit of doing exactly what you needed to do absolutely and that's what you yeah. know it, Richard. you know so we in business we have a fine <laughs> solution you understand? we can't we can't we can not pay make payroll at the end of the month we have to make payroll so if it's not selling um in ligany we, we carry it go down to barbican if it's not selling a barbican we carry it down to half a tree but we have to find somewhere where it's going to sell later and, and that's what we did that's what we did and and so we are we, you know we look forward now to to executing a great broadcast product this mm -hmm. year and then you know uh, once the pandemic passes we'll we're now going to be able to merge a broadcast product with a live product with state with with sound effects from the crowd and the energy of the crowd, which will make the broadcast product even more exciting. Yeah. So it's it's and I'm, and let me tell you another thing. Um, the times of the the the, the um the the, the games mm -hmm. and the, the the is something that um, we have had to debate because you needed to to slot the game times around broadcast. Um, times that that would be less competitive, and 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 get you you know maximum effect, as opposed to just saying you're gonna play the games you know at six o'clock or seven o'clock 
which can clash with with you know with prime time news you know yeah. so so you know and 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 that's something that isa may have to um yeah. to consider as well um with champs because what you saw is that champs was was able to 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 get good coverage outside of um the the the, the prime time um period mm -hmm. um uh, um, and and dominate because you know no, nobody had anything else to do. So can you imagine if the last day was actually on a Sunday as opposed to on a Saturday, where well, you know was, was lockdown, nobody had nothing else to do. Everybody would be you know yeah, and they in, you know they encouraged um, you know cheering parties. So you know you could you could log on and 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 do your cheer and so on. so. So Issa has a has a lot to work with. Issa has a lot to work with coming out of out of this experience to yeah. multiply their numbers. Yeah. I'm seeing um a question here from Kemoy. Hi Kemoy. In broadcasting live sports events from Jamaica, um, is the biggest market the diaspora market overseas? And where do they watch? How do they pay? And are they willing to pay? Right. I don't think they're willing to pay. I don't think they're willing to pay. Not yet. Uh, we have looked at it, and uh, we got all the data from Latin America and and you know and the rest of the world. Um, you know, I, I, I guess you can blame Steve Jobs um, once. You know, I I what you call it? Um, what you call it? The, the streaming thing, um, music, whatever. Anyway. iTunes, 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 iTunes. <laughs> My son just came in. So he <laughs> iTunes. I don't even have a clue. But once iTunes came in and free streaming and all of that, that nobody wants to pay for content anymore. So, so we're going to have to depend on advertising. So, yes, it's the diaspora. Yes, you have to give it to them free. Um, they watch it on streams. You know, nobody in the USA has a television anymore. You know, everybody is watching it on their laptop or on their phone, you know, or on their iPad. So it works perfectly for us. Uh, so we stream it. Um, you can we can stream it on Facebook, on YouTube, etc. And then we depend on on advertising revenue. Yeah. Um, so 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 um, so that's it. It it works. It, it works. works. And Chris, as we're wrapping up, what do you see as the future of football emerging out of this pandemic? I see a number of things. I will give you a statistic. Um, you know. When you look at the 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 the, the um, reggae boys of '98, almost 100% were locally based players. Now you have um, about 60, 60, about well, two thirds from 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 local, meaning they're born in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but more importantly, that's 66 and two thirds. Uh, two third um, is while they're they played in the Premier League, they're no longer here in the Premier League. They have mm. been exported. They have been they, they're they're now playing all over the world. So so the 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 the, the, the number one benefit is that we're going to be you know we're going after the Brazil and the Argentinas that are the top exporters of of human capital in the world. We want to we want to rival them in in exporting or our footballers in, yeah. in you know our talent so that the the, the 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 boys and the girls and the girls and the girls um can um can get a, a, a make a good living from their talent so yeah. that's the that's the first benefit um the second benefit of course is developing a an industry um in jamaica uh, that can pay people, pay the masseuse, pay the referees, uh, you know, uh, pay the coaches, uh, pay the players, uh, uh, pay the commentators, etc. So, so, so we, we develop an industry. This year, we we are we are looking at between two and three hundred million that um, that that will be um, spent on executing the league. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's coming all from you know corporate Jamaica, yeah. so so the, the 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 benefits of developing the sport of football, which Rochelle and and viewers and listeners 
football is by far the number one sport in the world. And the economic value of football is mind boggling. And then you marry that huge popular sport with a brand called Jamaica, you know, it, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. I get goose pimples just. You know, <laughs> yeah, Every time, every time I think about it, I'm not. You know, it's the money. It's the money excite me. Yeah, you know? so, so so I get excited about just the opportunity. Cause you know, just imagine, um, you know, at the end of of Premier League, having you know celebrity um, um, games, coaching sessions, etc. All the all the all the English Premier League and La Liga players are in, and Bundesliga. They all come to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Was well, as as season done? Them them all come to Jamaica, come hang out, and they you know they will do they will do um you know celebrity coaching sessions, they'll do celebrity games, etc. So so we have a whole lot of interlinkages that we can also add add to the to the thing. So yeah. um the industry, so two main benefits. That's what I say. One, we get to put a lot of these kids into a career. That they can earn from their talent and then secondly we develop an industry a solid industry locally that can that can pay the people that participate in it and yeah. they don't have to you know they don't have to have a you know side job or a, you know something on you know and, and, and they treat it as a hobby so that's that's what i that's you know so so five to ten years from now when you know when we're done i would like us to look back and say yeah we, you know we built a solid industry. We built a solid industry. And I'm glad you wrapped up on that because we did start out um, better late than never that we are actually doing it now. And what we're building is not the talent. We're full of talent. Nobody yeah. not talented like Jamaicans. What we're doing now is really building an industry. Thank you very much, Chris Williams. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you and Chris OJ, um, Keith and the team for launching this. You know, it's been an amazing success. And as I, you know, as 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 I said earlier, um, it has unlocked an opportunity for us to um, see and and feel and and hear from people outside of just the traditional media. Yeah. So really, 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 really want to big you up, Rochelle. And you know, I know you, I know you, I know you do it because of your love for Jamaica. Uh, so as as a Jamaican, I'm saying big up, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris Williams. Viewers, if you are just joining us and you're wondering, Mags, I see you're not getting your um your updates, we'll have to fix that. If you're just joining us and you're wondering, oh my goodness, I've missed that interview with Chris Williams. Remember that the interview is going to be this entire episode as all our other episodes. And we're at episode 54. They're available on smallbusiness.com. They're available on our Facebook page. They're available on YouTube. And please email us for this week's memo. That speaks to a lot of the sports business that Chris discussed with us. Now, at this time, ladies and gentlemen, you know, say we at COVID cast, we have to draw a crowd and we're drawing crowd tonight with a gentleman that is known to many of us. Those of us who have been in the national stadium, who remember him as a schoolboy athlete, a gentleman, a Jamaican Olympian, Jaheel Hyde. He is an athlete in track and field that holds many titles, including world youth champion, world junior champion, youth Olympic champion, and Olympian. And tonight, we have the pleasure of calling him COVID cast guest. Jaheel, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Yes, and it's a pleasure to have you. Um, we know you are, you're currently in training for the Olympics. Yes, I just actually came home from training before 8 o'clock, of course. <laughs> So, Jaheem, you would have heard some of what Chris Williams talked about with the business behind sports and developing an industry so that our athletes are able to benefit on an international scale. 
from where you sit, I mean, you have represented Jamaica from you are a young boy, you've done the school boy, you are now an Olympian. What are you seeing as some of the needs of the athletes that are not currently met? Well, I think mainly some of the main things, or the main thing what I can say, is obvious, it's quite obvious, which is financially. I mean, some of the athletes who are just starting up and um, some who have actually made it but fell off and fall, fell into financial troubles. I think financially, that's one of the main drawbacks for some of the athletes because they would have the potential, but financially they cannot, you know. It takes money. You have to invest money if you want, want if you want results, right? Yeah. You know, so I think that's one of the main. Do you drawbacks. think that athletes are good investments? If athletes are good investments? Of course. <laughs> um, look at you saying look at you saying both. Shelly and Fraser, Elaine, every just to name a few, you know, if Puma didn't invest in um Puma and Digital didn't invest in both from teenage days, yes, he probably wouldn't be who he is today. Yeah. So um you have gone through the full gamut of being a schoolboy athlete into being an Olympian, which is an our system because I mean champs is the Olympics, that's the Jamaica's Olympics. So by the time you reach the world stage, you're not afraid of people make it noise because we know it here in Jamaica. Yeah. But you would have experienced champs recently. Um, uh, w what was that experience for you as an athlete? What, what did you see as some of the developmental points or some of the good things that have come out of this very different staging of champs? Personally, I always tell people that once you can compete at champs, you can compete anywhere in the world because the, the nerves, the crowd, the noise, the singing in your ears, all of that, it just prepares it for the big stage. So that's why I think a lot of Jamaican athletes have that edge when it comes on to the, on the international level. When you make it to the finals, as I can go back to Bolt and Shelly and Shelly and a prime example, you know, she went into 2008 Olympics, not being the favorite, but I feel like she won that nervousness and with the crowd and I guess she remember champs and she just bring forward all of that. And yeah. I think that played that plays an integral role in a lot of Jamaican athletes if yeah. what, what competed at champs. So missing out on that this year with no spectators, um, do you think, because the athletes still performed well, mm -hmm. um, would you say that was a good staging of, of champs? Personally, sitting at home watching it, me, me and my dad watch it every day. I never miss nothing. I watch every field event. I watch everything all streaming on TV. For me, it didn't feel like it still felt like the crowd was there. And I'm sure a lot of the athletes they know physically that the crowd isn't there, but they know how big the how big champs is, they know that they need to enjoy the moment and live in the moment because a lot of them, this is their last year. Yeah. They need the champs for scholarship. Disappoint and it to me it felt like there was crowd, and I'm sure to a lot of them it still felt like that. They still went hard. And, and Jekyll, um, one of the things that I've noticed too, and, and we, you know, we've seen over the years, Chris talked about sponsorship, just even the importance of athletes getting sponsorship because the athlete is a product. So you are a product and you have to continue honing the skills and, and um, developing the product that you are. But I also noticed that there's a flip side that a lot of athletes are also kind of showcasing their other life on um, social media, et cetera, which is kind of building a whole different following for them. What do you think about just this, this whole virtual space that even athletes are, are, are going into? I think it per plays an integral role because separate and apart from you showcasing, it's being showcased on TV probably once a week or once every month or maybe not until a big chat meet, you have to know sell yourself i believe strongly in social media and the social media proper social media presence you know you have to market yourself um be public be, you know interact with your supporters your followers and all that type. so i think that you know brings people closer to you also it gives you perspective um sponsorship deals yes you know people sponsors ask, the reason you get a sponsorship is because they want their brand to be out there 
not only they want to be aligned with Jail Hyde, but what is Jail Hyde doing for us? Yeah. So they want their brand to be out there. So I feel like when you market yourself, it starts with you. You have to you know market yourself properly. You have to bring yourself properly. How you, your social media presence, you know, all of that. I think it does a lot for sponsors. It, it sure does. Because I feel like I know Jahil well. I know her like a daughter. She's lovely. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and that creates a whole different heartwarming for even who you are as a product and, and, pro and, and businesses that sponsor you. Mm -hmm. But you have been... Track and field over this last year has been, if nothing else, just a hot mess. Waiting to see if sports would open, what events would open, is there going to be an Olympics? What is it like for an athlete? Because your business, this is your business, that you're not sure if you're going or coming. What mm -hmm. has that been like keeping up your motivation and your training during this time? Well, for one, you have to be mentally strong because... Um, a lot of athletes, not only me, they, for example, last year, they probably were on their the best season ever. They probably had the best background training, the best leading up to track meets. A lot of them had one run and they probably had the best season opener ever. So they were looking forward to the rest of the season. And then COVID locked down. And for me, especially where I live, I couldn't move. St. Catherine, I couldn't move, none at all. Yeah. So I had to be at home. At one point, I think I was going to lose my mind. I used to just play game, eat. You know, I was kind of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say depressed, but sad that I couldn't get to run and showcase my talent and be at the Olympics. But um, I must lift my heart off to and say a big thank you to Bruce James and um, Kat Gale at JTS for, you know, spending for us, you know, for, for trying to trying their best to get me. And I think that has helped us a lot, especially this year. We have some needs around which was great, and I think I'm running again on Saturday because okay. of the J-Trace. So it's hard on us athletes mentally, but you just have to be prepared so that when the time comes, you are you are prepared and not behind playing catch-up. Yes. So with the Olympics coming up, um, there's been a lot of talk and in the media of whether or not the Olympics will actually um, go ahead what does that do to to you as an athlete when you're even thinking about your economic future and about the Olympics to keep that training up? Um, what what is that process like? Just working through things. Um, as athletes, we know the ultimate or every athlete's ultimate goal is the Olympics. So um, that with that floating around in the air, it's kind of iffy, mixed feelings, but. As I said, we still have to be prepared because yeah. you don't have an opportunity to come and you're not prepared. But even if there isn't any Olympics, you know, there are meets. Come, there are meets overseas. There are meets in Jamaica, which you can earn. The J-Trade just put out some meets, which you can earn. There are meets overseas. So that's why you need to be prepared so that when your number calls, you're ready. Yeah. And how, how, do, how does a professional athlete earn from the various meets? How does it work? Um, for one, well, uh, for example, like a Diamond League, you know, you go to the Diamond League, you, they, based on placement, the, the meat pays you, the meat organizers pay you. Some people will get a pay and see depending on the caliber athlete you are. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, you can live off being an athlete. Yeah, and and without even being a Usain Bolt, you can't. Yeah, just, yeah. Just, just one thing I always preach is consistency. So if you're going around 100, you just try and be consistent. You find a time which is consistent that you work towards that and try to be the Yeah. Well, Jahil, you know, we are, I am a big fan. Um, we are supporting. I hear somebody was trying to break your record this champs. Were they actually <laughs> able to? No, no, I, I definitely want to talk about that because my, my record actually wasn't there. They erased it. For what reason, I don't know. When I ran it, it was an open event, 400 meter hurdles open. But I was in class one. And um, I ran what? 49.01 and the JC guy ran 49.86. But they moved the event to class one and class two. So I guess when they moved it to class one, they um, erased every record. Yeah. So 
Um, the record before he ran it was 49.9, and then he ran 49.8. But any real champs, lover, and track and field fanatic, and yeah, know that. Yeah. I well, I said, Jahil. <laughs> yeah, I still have the fastest time ever to run at champs. Those things are just for the books, they don't really matter to me. I mean, I would love if my name is there so that when my kid grows up, she can say that, oh, my father is in the champs book. Um, 2014, this, uh, you know, just the whole lot, but there are, big, there are bigger things ahead. Oh. And know? I think um, before you go, I have to take this question that came in from Jana Patterson. Thank you, Jana. She says, have you seen where a lot of upcoming athletes have pivoted out of the sporting industry due to the pandemic? Yeah, definitely. Um, and go back to what I said first, financially, once if some of them was on some because they have bills to pay, they have most to feed, they have families to feed, you know, and they have to take care of themselves. So, whereas an athlete who is upcoming and you know they have a they, they are a bright prospect, but they don't have it financially, the pandemic came. They realized that oh, I don't have a chance to earn. I wouldn't have a chance to earn, you know. So that in itself will drive drive them out of the sport. So I think that along with other factors, whereas injuries especially during the pandemic. So it's a lot of things mentally. And I think a lot of us have to focus on our mental health. Yeah. That's one thing I don't play with. You know, people always wonder how I'm, why I'm so quiet, why I'm this and why I'm that. But I have to protect my mental space sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and, the, and the mental space has been so affected to by COVID that that is such a great point for you to end on thank you jaheel Hyde. so whether or not we're cheering you on in front of the screen or we are in the stadium know that jamaica is behind you or, or kicking the football or kicking the football <laughs> i forgot about that because you're multi-potentialite you're a multi-talented athlete wow thank you very much jaheel right. Hyde, ladies and gentlemen if you are just joining us know that you can catch this interview with Jaheel Hyde right here on Facebook, YouTube, on smallbusinessportal.com. I say all the fans, go Jaheel, well said. True words, I see you, Gabriel, Renee, Raskigi, Shauna K, Jana, thank you so much. And we're going to be talking about another sports. Okay, you know how sports in Jamaica, when we talk about sports, we have to talk about sports. And at this time, I'm going to welcome Jerry Benswick, chairman of the Jamaican Rugby Football Union. Now, Benswick is his name. He found his sporting passion and love for rugby while attending the Great St. Catherine High School, where he played club, club rugby as part of Team Cats, which later was renamed Thundercats, and represented Jamaica countless times in, in international competitions. He suffered a severe injury and then went on to do acting and drama full-time. However, he earned certification as a drama teacher and appeared in many stage and film productions. So for some of you who are looking and saying, this man looked very familiar. However, in 2016, he was elected chairman of Jamaican Rugby Football Union. And since then, he and his administration have moved rugby from an unknown sport to one of the fastest growing and most popular sports in Jamaica. Jerry Benswick, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Rochelle. It's a pleasure to be here. No, Jerry. That wonderful intro, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, listen, no, rugby, cause all of a sudden me, me, me seeing rugby and hearing a lot more about rugby. And I know your yeah. administration has done a lot about doing it, but rugby has been around in Jamaica for quite some time. What has been over happening? Over hundred years. Interest in rugby. Oh, we, we've been here for over a hundred years, actually. Um, rugby started out with the expatriates, uh, the, the British soldiers who came to Jamaica from back in World War II mm -hmm. and all that, and they played rugby on at the on the military base. And they kept playing and then, you know, a lot of Jamaicans, a lot of visitors came to Jamaica and they got together and played with them. And eventually there was a whole heap of expatriates on the island. And then they all started playing rugby with each other. So by the time I got into rugby, I was a little tot and I saw lots of clubs playing and they were mainly expatriates 
who were playing the game at the time. So you could call it was a white sport at the time. Mm-hmm. But then it, it pretty much became localized eventually. You know, gradually, you know, less and less expatriates, more local clubs popping up. So the sport grew and it's been through a lot over the since I started playing until now. And the story of how it's evolved is very intricate and it's kind of like any other story that a, a trying sport will have in a, an unknown sport in a country would have where it has its ups, its downs, the mix up, the, the, the struggles, um, the internal struggle, the external struggle, the, 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 the ideology to try and get it right. It's a whole heap of something. And yeah. so when I came in, I brought with me, uh, when I came back in, because I've always been a rugby player yeah. and I'm still a rugby player. Right now, if you said to me, we have a match you go play, I will jump up, run out there and take my legs because yeah. I'm a rugby player through and through. I'm not going to quit until my, my body can't move, then I'm a rugby player. Um, but I want to say this. Before I go on, I want to educate our audience. Rugby is a sport for hooligans played by gentlemen. I, I, I have to tell everybody that. It's a gentleman's sport. Or it's a hooligan sport, sorry, played by a gentleman. So if you're a rugby player, you'll understand the fine difference. When you're on the pitch, there is no remorse whatsoever in knocking heads. We go at it, we're competitive, we play hard, we tackle each other hard. But when we're off the pitch, or even during the game, we're still gentlemen. There's always a, 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 a chivalrous behavior that happens in this tough, rough sport. So I'll tackle you hard, but I'll stretch my hand out to pick you up off the ground, you know? And uh, you can't disrespect the referee, it's different from other sports. Very disciplined and respect is a big part of the sport. You can't back pass the ref at all. You know, like, yeah, like, Chris was talking about football earlier. And when I was listening to him, I was saying, wow, you know, he's talking so many wonderful things about how football and, you know, the, the advertising and broadcasting can work and make the sport better. And, and I was thinking about it and saying, when he said, he said something particular that he watched the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl live is completely boring compared to Super Bowl on TV. He's right. Uh, it's very similar when you watch a world rugby game, but it's not in the sense that a live rugby game mm-hmm. is crazy. It's insane. What happens with a live rugby game is no matter how far you are up in the stadium, you still hear the licks being put on people on yeah. the ground a million miles down there where you're seeing them. They don't look like ants really because in the rugby stadiums they're a little more compact. Um, so they really don't look as fine as the ones in the, the USA Super Bowl stuff. I can tell you, you hear nobody wears pads in rugby. It's just... You, you basically play in like football gears. You wear a top like this, you wear a short, a pair of boots, some socks, and you run on the pitch, you catch a ball and you run and people tackle you. I like to say it's a lot like sucky with a ball. You know, you just, you try to run and evade people and they try to tackle you. But you hear the hit. Mm-hmm. And when you're in a live version of the sport, and I've been to one of the most exciting places to be, Hong Kong 7, 40,000 people in the stadium. And you hear somebody getting hit on the field and see the guy get up after he gets hit. You're like, he can't be real. <laughs> so the level of excitement inside the stadium is electric. It's loud. It's crazy. It's constant. And when you watch it on TV, while it's entertaining on TV, the atmosphere in the stadium is far greater for rugby. It's, it's a flip compared to football. In football, I know the, the atmosphere in the stadium is great. And everybody yeah. loves it. But when you listen to the commentary and watch football on TV, you get to see a lot more things that you kind of might miss when you're watching the game live. But in rugby, it's different. You hear and see everything. That's such a that's and that's such an interesting perspective. And you know, as you talked about rugby, and I, I felt the excitement about rugby. My question then is, why isn't rugby much more popular in Jamaica? And I can answer that question very simply. When I played, nobody knew what the sport was. And I would have a rugby ball walking with coming from St. Catherine High. And people would see me with this ball in my hand. And 
you hear the conversation popping up as you pass by and somebody would shout, oh, what kind of game that? America football? And I'm like, no, it's not football, it's rugby. And they say, rugby, I want that. <laughs> and, and for me, as a child playing the sport or a teenager playing the sport, it, it kind of hurt my heart to know that I couldn't walk around and be recognized as a rugby player. It, mm. it, it didn't sit well with me. And I went through high school with the same notion, went through my life with the same notion, and didn't see rugby do what I thought it should be doing. It should be a household product in Jamaica because, believe it or not, rugby is one of the most suited sports for Jamaica. Jail Hyde, right now, as an athlete, can make a quicker transition to rugby than he can to football. Football mm -hmm. has intricate skills of tackling, passing, um, and skills that to play at a high level, he would have to really hone those skills or have those skills to be able to play. But rugby for Jahil would be an easy crossover sport without those football skills. He doesn't need that. What he would need to do is catch the ball and run fast. So for him, he could quickly, and we have seen it happen in other teams where they've used ex-track athletes to play which we, what we call sevens rugby. And in sevens, there's only seven guys on the pitch, full-size field like a football field with a little extension for the goal, the goal area. And it's just seven guys on that whole leap of space. The speed wins every time. Yeah. And I, I, do, I, do, I do recall inviting Jahil to come play rugby once, and he laughed at me. And he said, he said rugby, no, so we can't take a lick. <laughs> I want to go too because we are so you know we Jamaicans love them football. Mm -hmm. we, we love track and field. We we love cricket. Mm -hmm. no, going on, we still love yeah. cricket, and yet um, rugby is uh, is as you said an easy transition for even some of the other skills that we have in the track and so we already have the space for it. So my yeah. question. Is there money in rugby in the same way that we can see the business opportunity from sport, from football and track and field? Is is the same type of, of economic benefit there for rugby? Yeah, there is. And in fact, rugby rivals football in on the world stage. Uh, the amount of followers it has, the amount of people that pack the stadium, the, the business side of rugby outside of our region is a huge market it's 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 coming alive in this northern hemisphere now usa canada uh have very vibrant rugby um platforms that they, they, they the game is played and they have a league and they have uh right now they have a premier league that started in america so they have professional rugby playing in america now mm -hmm. they didn't have it before what what has been our our drawback is that we have a small number of people living on our islands in the Caribbean. So each island has a small amount of people. Jamaica has a small amount, Cayman a few people. So it's not a, the numbers aren't great. So World Rugby, which is our governing body, has pushed a lot of their energy into South America, where in Mexico alone is millions of people. And South America is just huge amount of people. So they're pushing the sport in that region to grow faster. They're pushing it in Canada to grow faster, USA to grow faster because of numbers. However, I am not disheartened by this because one of the best rugby playing nations in the world in seven, which we can very much capitalize on what we have is our roughness. The Jamaicans rough, and we're strong, and we're fast. Is the, the, one of the best playing teams in the world in sevens rugby is Fiji. And Fiji is the current Olympic World Rugby Sevens champion from mm. 2016. And what that tells us is that an island smaller than Jamaica being a giant in the sport means that any island can be a giant in the sport. It doesn't need the big nations or anything like that. So go, to go back to really what your question is about whether there are opportunities and money to be made, yes, there is. Uh, in Jamaica, we, can't, we don't have a professional version of the sport yet. We're still just growing. We're in our, you know, you know what we call our, our junior stages. You know, we're almost teenagers now, but we're not really reach teenage yet. So we're still working our way towards that. So for now, rugby won't pay you directly. However, 
you can play rugby here and get transferred yeah. elsewhere and earn. There are clubs to join, there are colleges to join, and all over the world they're looking for rugby players. Yeah. And phenomenal things, ha things happen when Jamaica turns up at an event. We are not a rugby. It's like when, it's like when the, the bobsled team turn up at Calgary for, for push the bobsled. Everybody goes, there's a Jamaican bobsled team. And everybody goes, where? They run out and they want to see it. Because these island people who don't have snow pushing a bobsled. It's the same kind of effect that happens when Jamaica turns up. It's like, oh, did they bring you St. Boat? Did they bring a, they're, they're asking about because what they expect from us is speed. So they all rush to see a Jamaica game because they want to see how much speed we can put on the field and mm -hmm. us, we have great players who, who play the game but we don't have a super fast player yet on our male team we do have a super fast female player who was a track athlete transition to rugby She's well, a DC um, so jerry because rajesh asked a question is there um are there women involved in playing rugby in jamaica or regionally and the answer is yes Oh yeah, well, listen now. I'm gonna tell you something about the women who play rugby. Women's rugby is nothing less than entertaining. It's fantastic to watch. The women keep the ball in play a lot longer than the men. Um, we find the women hold the, carry the ball in hand a lot more. The, the ball stays in field a lot more. The game stops a lot less when the women play because they have a more disciplined way of playing the game. Men are wild and crazy. So they will kick the ball, they will chase it. Women, not, they don't do a, a lot of kicking. They probably prefer to carry it in the hand. So you see a lot more tackling, a lot more, this, even though the men hit harder and the game is faster, but it's comparative to the men. And on the world stage, we have amazing athletes who play women's rugby. In Jamaica, we do have a national rugby team. We have school girls playing rugby and we have lots of women who play. The beauty yeah. about rugby and women playing is at Netballer makes a great rugby player, absolutely fantastic rugby player, a transitional player. Uh, a tennis player will make a great rugby player. A track athlete will make an excellent rugby player. A wrestler can be an absolutely fabulous rugby player. And let me broaden the scope for you now. Rugby is the one sport that every single kid can play. So if you go into a school and you have a rugby team, Every size child that wants to play has a spot on the field because you have a spot for a big guy who's slow, can run fast, and he's huge. He's a superstar on a rugby pitch because all we need him to do is catch the ball, run straight, and run over people. And don't try to go around nobody. Just hit them, smash hard, and keep going. Then we have the little short kid who is really tiny and evasive. We put the ball in that player's hand and we let him pass it from one set of big guys to the other guys in the back who are also fast. And he's a playmaker. He's quick. He's agile. He can move in and out of trouble. He'll be the one to go get the ball, pass somebody else, dig it out of problems. So there's a space for that person. The tall, lanky fellow or female will be playing in the scrum sometimes or out on the wing. You want somebody tall in there to jump and lift that person high so they can catch the ball for you. Because there are different things that happen in the game that allow for varying body types. Yeah. So everybody yeah. can play the Jerry, story. One of the things I think you are doing, because I see Rajesh says, I had no clue. Very interesting. Thanks for answering my question. I think many of our viewers are like, this rugby thing not sound bad. This rugby thing <laughs> sounds like it has potential. And, you know, as a, as a sport that was growing in Jamaica, you know, and still had some ways to go, um, mm -hmm. the pandemic hit. What is the future now of rugby with with um one year pretty much of of not, of very little activity? What happens now? Ah uh, well, this is the tough part. Uh, while we haven't been actively playing the sport and thing, what's happened is a lot of administrative work has happened. So the the, the pandemic is a blessing and a curse, just like uh, just like Mr. Williams said. Um. When Chris said, it's a great thing that the pandemic happened because it allowed us to now see uh, more opportunities. And in everybody's situation, there's always an opportunity and it's just for you to find it. So for us, it, the, the opportunity was to get better administrative work in. So a lot of administrative work has been happening behind the scenes, planning and executing. And we've been going to meetings and getting trainings and World Rugby, our governing body, 
has a lot of platforms that we have a lot of stuff to learn on. Yeah. Now, going forward now, we have suffered a lot because our sport is full contact. It's hug up, throw down, get up, you know, it's a lot of contact. It's far more, it's a lot more contact than other sports. It's, it's like wrestling and track and field and netball and football in all in one. It's still, yeah. So it's a super active um, sport. And because of that, we're high on the COVID risk meter, which means we have been one of the last sports to get a return to play going. Um, it's, it's really been a struggle for us because right now we're still waiting for approval for our document to return just to get our national team ready for their Olympic qualification tournament in June. Mm -hmm. They still haven't gotten approval. So we're sitting down like, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> the team sport we need our team training together so we're still mind blown that we don't have approval but it is what it is we just have to do what we can yeah but after the when the pandemic eases now we basically have to reignite our our sport because all our seniors who were in their final year missed out on playing from mm -hmm. high school our club players just like jahil said would have been distracted by life you know, you don't have regular games to go to, so you stop training for a while and you start eat and you know, you chill a little bit and you eat some more and you're thinking that you're fit and you go go run to get your feel or your body feel and then you start blow like a <laughs> like you're dying and you're telling yourself, Well, I'm can't bother gonna further with this. And you, you, you we lose players over the pandemic. We we know we have lost players, but we also know that we have a lot of young players that have eager to get back on the pitch. Yeah. So, so we have kind of gonna, schools. We have to even yeah. get into the schools. Right. So luckily for us, um, like Chris was telling us about, is that sports is has beautiful future in Jamaica, financial future. And we have been fortunate just before the pandemic hit, we got a major sponsor for the first time, a full sponsor for our school boys program in the credit unions of Jamaica and they decided to come on board with us. They see us as a as a rising star in Jamaica as a sport. And so they decided, well, you know, why don't we go with the little guy um and see how we can get. And so they have yeah, they have pledged sponsorship to us and they're still on board and we are working alongside with them on various platforms. And yeah. the idea is as soon as the pandemic clears and we can start actively playing, we're going to go into every single school in Jamaica with our sponsor, Credit Unions of Jamaica, and they will be branded everywhere and we're going to be streaming our games. So they're going to get a lot of exposure yeah. from us. And and it's an economic opportunity that even comes from getting a sponsor to push the sport more. No, because Jerry, yes. let me tell you, I, I didn't know a lot about rugby. And it is one of our unknown gems. So it was yes. very important that you, we had you on so that as we're looking at the future of sports, we recognize that the economic value in the many sports that we can participate in, that we can grow and hone our athletes in is so important. I see one last question coming in. Hi, Lissandra. Lissandra asked, though, and I know some people, they just want to know. One last question. The injury them. or the injury them go? <laughs> no, that is the fear that everybody has about rugby. When they hear, oh, no man licks and things. What I can tell you is we have uh, less injury rate than football. It's, in, it's incredible. People say there's no way a full contact sport can have a lesser injury rate than football. And I say to them, it's weird, but it's true. Um, what happens is that because nobody's wearing pads, nobody's trying to break your neck or tear your head off. And there yeah. are very strict rules that govern how you tackle someone. And then you're coached and trained how to fall, how to pop up and keep running. And then you condition your body in such a way that you can take an impact. And then the, 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 the injuries that you get are basic. They're um you might sprain your ankle sprain a finger you know you have to somebody that, is, that is from school boy school girl i mean it is uh it has no gender bias i mean nope. this sport and i see warren where hi warren where who's big up uncle jerry so big up uncle Let's jerry talk. 
let's say why let's tell you why warren Weir said big up uncle jerry because warren Weir is a rugby player he played rugby in primary school uh and in, yes he played in primary school in fact the gentleman who coached him was a teammate of mine from st catherine who became a teacher and coach warren warren represented jamaica rugby union sevens in 2019 i think it was 2019 i believe it was 2019 he played in the cac games and we medaled so warren has warren is probably the only athlete in jamaica with medals in two different sports in two different, so he is a olympian and olympic medalist as well as a rugby medalist which actually a rugby medalist point that it is the sport that keeps on giving it takes in everybody regardless of gender it takes in it doesn't have any issue with size it doesn't no. have issue with height and no. it is as you say a sport for hooligans that is played by gentlemen and no. we are trying to build the gentlemen and the ladies in ladies Yes, in our sport. It's a Jerry. I know people are currently on YouTube trying to find rugby games because mm. you have now educated us on this sport that has so much potential, economic potential, oh, yes. the potential for our young people. Warren says it was actually 2018. Jerry, 2018. Thank you. We are a proper Benz. Continue the great. <laughs> and thank you very thank much you. for joining us on COVID Cast JA. Ladies and it's a gentlemen, pleasure having me. Thank you very much. And rugby is a sport for all. Let's remember oh, that. He said, "Oh, he could have get a little run from the rugby team too." And since Actually, so bad. Just so you know, before you go, there's a version of the sport that every age can play. It's called touch rugby, where there's no real contact. It's just like tag with a rugby ball. So you have a few rugby rules, and you kind of tag somebody with two hands on the hip, and that's yeah. it. We're running okay. and I tag you, and then yeah, so you yeah. can play that. Anybody who can run and catch can play that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jerry, because tonight has been so important, viewers. We have talked about football. We've talked about the business of football. We've talked to an athlete, our own Jaheel Hyde, who talked to us about the business of being an athlete and what that has been like in the pandemic and the pivots in the pandemic. We got an opportunity to speak with Christopher Williams, co-founder and CEO of Proven and very importantly, chairman of Professional Football Jamaica Limited. And he took us on an educational journey on the business of football, the opportunities, the economic opportunities to monetize football for this nation. And we wrapped up with Jerry Benswick, chairman of Jamaica Rugby Football Union, uh, a, a pretty much unknown sport, but a sport that has so much potential for our economy and another way because sports is certainly a way that we are able as a nation to be known but also very importantly that we get an opportunity to develop our young people and to create more opportunities for this great little place called jamaica thank you very much for that sugar so ladies and gentlemen viewers we are at episode 54 if this is this is your first time joining us we are here every thursday at 7 30 pm we are covid cast brought to you by the psoj NCB group, the JMMB group. If this is your first time, you can catch all our episodes. We're on YouTube, smallbusinessportal.com. We're on Facebook. And we also, we don't just come and talk. We give you material that you can learn the different businesses and all of the concepts. We've talked about pensions. We've talked about your financial statements. We've talked about wills. We've talked about pivoting your business. We've talked about operationalizing your strategy. We have talked about a lot and we provide you the material, the resources. Email us at sme at psoj.org so that you're on our mailing list and you can receive our weekly business tips Ladies and gentlemen, it has been amazing to spend this time with you. See you again next week, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. for COVID Cast JA. Walk good, sanitize, wear your mask. So you have a great idea to start a business, but you don't know where to start. We completely understand. 
You have a lot of questions and almost no answers. Smallbusinessportal.com is here to help. At smallbusinessportal.com, you gain access to information on loans, grants, and investment opportunities from verified financial institutions. Guess what you also get? Useful business tips, access to training, all these services combine to make your business idea into a reality. Start your journey today at smallbusinessportal.com.